University of Michigan. I grew up outside of uh, Detroit, in Detroit suburbs. Uh, I did my PhD at the University of Texas in fluid mechanics and colloids, trying to assemble small particles, doing nano assembly using flow and electrostatic interactions to make nano patterns. Uh, I did a postdoc at the University of Washington, where I learned about proteins and protein interactions, and that's the basis of my research in my lab. Now I do an analysis of protein binding to binding to each other, protein binding to surfaces, protein interactions with sugars, with the lipid membrane. We do calculations. We have a computer cluster in uh, there in Levering. We've got a cluster of about 400 processors that can crank up and do lots and lots of calculations on what the protein structures look like. We try to predict things for drugs or for understanding biology or for engineering materials. Uh, and then leadership. I'm in charge of the graduate admissions here in our department, so I've just finished the uh, PhD application, so if you're interested in graduate school, you might stay in touch. I know what it looks like when we get 200 applications and we whittle it down to 30 to, to bring to campus. Um, so that's that's something I do for the department. I also am part of the University Leadership Council of Johns Hopkins. We meet across all the Johns Hopkins institutions to talk about diversity and uh, inclusion in the institutions. Let's talk about some material. Why do we care to synthesize, analyze, design, build, and operate chemical processes? So that will tell us why we have to do this in class. Um, I have a bunch of reasons. So does the book. Um, you guys chose can be, or you're thinking about choosing can be if you're in this class, so I have a feeling you have some thoughts about this too. Um, it will be regular in my class to work back and forth, uh, keep you engaged in answering your questions, so we want to do that right now. Is that 11? I read your 11 reasons. We need to make something. Make something new. You need to make money. Make money. Good. Help people. Help people. Why do you want to understand the world? Understand the world. We create things. We create things. So like a reverse design. Eight. You want to transport energy. Transport energy. Or mass. Nine, you want to make models. And that means it's having to understand the problem. And 13, manipulating the environment. Manipulate the environment. Say again. And understanding problems. Understand problems. Understand problems. Understand. Sorry, it's messy. I'm going fast. They have a lot of reasons here. Uh, and then, did I get the last one right? But if the environment, there's something else. Are you here with weather? Weather. All right. Weather's definitely an interesting process today. That's a great list. Um, next door, you guys had 10 reasons. What are your names, real quick? Louder. Echoey in here, so I'm going to ask you all, this, all your long time to talk about it. What do, what do you have that they didn't get? Um, minimize damages. Minimize damages. Minimize damage. What do, what do you mean by that? Um, I think it's want to make it to as safe as possible, so minimize damage. What kind of damage? Right, making your product. Ooh, okay. Um, you want to maximize yield. Maximize yield. Purify products. Purify products. Yeah, we don't want no dirty products. Find ways to use waste products. Use waste. Excellent. Yeah, one of the great things chemical engineers can do is take stuff we don't want and turn it into stuff we do want. That's really good. Okay. Oh. Scientific 
prove scientific arguments. Yeah, if we can, yeah, so if we can make it, that kind of proves the theory works, right? That's that's definitely the design stuff we do in the lab. We want to design it. If we, we, it might work, but you really have to make it. Actually, you have to make it to, to prove it. Others. See, and then we had, who was next? You guys had eight or nine over here? Yeah. Any, any we've missed? Um, we said that you can, like, you can um, produce on an industrial level. So, uh, scale up. Yes. You also have consistency in product. Consistency. Product. So if we're going to make something, I want it to be the same every time and high quality. I don't want some of it to be exactly. messy. And that yeah. kind of minimizes waste as well. That minimizes waste. Yeah. These go together. Yes. Uh, we also said you can perfect your technique. Perfect. What do you mean by technique? Or whatever process you're trying to do. Yeah, so it's kind of like optimize <laughs> the process exactly. in some way. You want to do it just the right way and make it as good as possible. Yep. It said it makes life easier. Makes life Processes. easier. How about others? You guys in the middle have, did you have any more we haven't talked about? Uh, make something quickly. Make something quickly. You might want to do it faster than slower. Mm -hmm. That Ebola vaccine or is almost here actually, which is pretty amazing because I only started working on that a few months ago. So, What else? But if we could have had it three months ago, if we could have done it in a week, that would have been awesome. We've been working on that. Yes? Um, like modifying cells and organisms. Modifying cells and organisms. So um, this is chemical and biological process analysis. So we're going to do chemical processes like making ammonia or uh, gasoline, but we're also going to talk about biological processes like making ATP or making artemisinin or some kind of drug or pharmaceutical or cancer cells. Um, all of this is in chemical biomolecular engineering. It's the same science, the same length scales. Um, Cells just have a lot of reactions, a lot of separations, and a lot of compartments all going on at once at a very small scale. That's the same thing, so we're going to analyze those kinds of things. Good. Anything else I missed? Yeah. Being able to uh, switch from raw resources to a chemically synthesized alternative. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Change raw material source. Really nice if, uh, say, we could get our, our chemical out of the shale gas that's really cheap and really easy to get now instead of the petroleum that we're importing from overseas. So change, change the raw material source to something else, or maybe get that energy straight from the sun, something like that, from, from biofuels. Uh, okay, so what, is, what does Murphy say? Murphy says, uh, she has four reasons for this. function. For example, I want a screen for the Kindle that can switch really fast and be really bright and really dark uh, and really cheap. So a particular function. You want a product that does something in particular. Uh, two, to convert, we have this already, waste materials. We should have that first one too, just in several different forms. Useful products. Um, yeah, so we've talked about this. We have all kinds of waste so materials. Can we take waste materials and do something useful with them? Um, anybody hear the Bill Gates toilet? Bill Gates put out, it's about three or four years ago now, a challenge. There's all kinds of uh, Sanitary issues in third world countries where uh, sewer treatment is a problem that leads to health problems. So if you could take human waste and turn it into something useful quickly, uh, that would be really valuable. So Bill Gates has one of these grand challenges. If you can make a better toilet, the toilet hasn't changed for about a millennium now. But if you can make a better one that does chemically and physically what it needs to do to make that waste product into something useful, then, then 
healthy. Um, Bill Gates will pay you a lot of money to develop it and deploy it here in Africa and other places in the third world. So, okay, convert waste materials to useful products. Number three, to improve the performance of a natural material. Artemisinin is a chemical in the rubber trees in the rainforest. It's pretty expensive to tear them down and purify it. It uses an anti-malarial drug, but we've got to kill a lot of rainforest to get to it. Uh, there's a huge effort to use synthetic biology to create cells, reproduce the enzymes that can make artemisinin and then separate it. If you do that, we can improve this performance of a natural material in terms of the environmental uh, costs that it takes to get to it. Uh, let's see, and four, last one, to convert material into energy. A lot of chemical engineering is about taking chemicals and turning them into energy, fossil fuels, coal, oil, especially today with the shale gas and the shale oil that's booming in this country and Canada. And uh, how do we do that? How do we convert that material into energy? How do we do it efficiently? How do we do it cleanly? How do we do it safely?